Hi and welcome. So when you're trying to remove a lot of stock uh, out of the center of a part on the lathe, traditional method is to use a drill bit, which works quite well. It's much faster than boring. Same on the mill for that matter. Um, but when you're drilling a big hole, you either have to build up to this large size with smaller drill bits um, so that you keep the forces down or you have to find another solution. And one of the ways to do that is to use a pair of annular cutters or a set of annular cutters like this. And the annular cutters have the advantage that they don't need to cut the middle at all. Um, they are limited by depth of cut. So this particular set is a one inch depth of cut. I've seen two and three inch depth of cuts. Uh, annular cutters before. So what I want to do is to make an adapter to fit in my tailstock of the lathe. I could try and find a chuck that will hold a three-quarter inch uh, shank, but instead it's just going to be pretty easy to make a uh, uh, an adapter because I can start with this MT4 to 3 8 24 threaded part. It's ground flat and all I need to do is make a holder that's got a threaded back uh, that will work on this and with the lathe in the normal direction um, which would be this direction uh, the annular cutter is going to want to cut and this is going to want to tighten the thread so everything works in your favor uh, it's pretty good with the traditional lathe uh, rotation which probably isn't an accident uh, the people that create lathes once upon a time are pretty creative folk so uh, I'm going to start with this I'm just going to basically make a uh, holder threaded 3 8 24 on the back, 3 quarter on the front with two uh, set screws to match the Sheldon flats, uh, the Weldon flats, sorry not Sheldon, Weldon flats and uh, we should be good to go. I've got some 1144 stress proof we're going to use and uh, we'll get going. So I bought this cutoff stock which has been partially turned down on eBay. It was fairly inexpensive. So uh, I'm going to face off uh, a good portion of the bevel on here and uh, Let's just see how this stuff turns. We're going to try some somewhat aggressive uh, cuts just to see if that works. Uh, let's uh, do 9 thousandths a revolution and 30 thousandths depth of cut and see how that goes. Uh, so we'll probably want to slow this down a little bit. Uh, so we're going to be down around uh, 440 RPMs. That is a fair amount of stick out, but it should be okay. Now that is cutting nicely though. We've got a bigger bite here. 40 thousandths depth of cut. Uh, depth of cut. Finish isn't bad, but it's not perfect by any stretch. Longitudinal cuts, 25 thousandths depth of cut, 9, 000, uh, 2.2 thousandths of revolution. Makes a really nice finish. Next up, as I have to take off a fair amount of material, we want to get down to one and a half inches. Uh, I'm going to try it again, but next time, 25 thousandths depth of cut with a much, much higher feed rate. Let's see how it looks. At this rate, it would take all year. So we're going to try 25 thousandths depth of cut, 22 thousandths of revolution. This should be fun speed. Well, I'm getting some blue chips out of that. All right. 
That does leave a uh, pretty coarse surface finish. And ooh -hoo -hoo, they are hot. <laughs> Very blue. Coarse surface finish, but uh, not insanely bad. Better than cold rolled because it's consistent, or even hot rolled for that matter. So, now we'll do 50, see how this works out. This is a pretty big bite. 22 thousandths a revolution, uh, feed rate, 50 thousandths depth of cut. Chip breaker's engaging though. Getting blue chips out of it too. So here's what the finish looks like after I followed up my 50 thousandths depth of cut, 22 thousandths of revolution, feed rate uh, turning, and I followed it with a 15 thousandths depth of cut, 2.2 thousandths, and uh, I'm afraid that it uh, damaged this uncoated carbide. These are carboloy inserts, I believe, uh, pretty old ones, and uh, without coolant, uh, they really didn't like the abuse. I mean, the finish still isn't terrible. Still better than uh, the best thing you can get out of cold rolled uh, with a regular insert without doing vertical shear cutting. So I am pretty pleased, uh, but I'm going to have to flip this insert over for the final pass so I get a cleaner finish. Let's come back. Raise the RPM using a vertical shear cutter just to see the difference in finish. Pretty shiny. That's no lube. Let's see if lube changes anything. Okay, that is a really nice finish. So that was a vertical shear cutter. Oh, you can see the chatter marks though, that's interesting. <laughs> see where it chattered out here and didn't chatter here at all. That's kind of interesting. This is what the chips look like coming off the vertical shear cutter. So now we just need to drill out the majority of the center material. So we'll start with the center drill. Say, this stuff cuts pretty nicely. Yeah, it's kind of a long drill bit, isn't it? Fortunately, we're going to bore the final part. So now we're going to bore 25 thousandths. So this is a two tenths over uh, fit and it really does not wiggle other than in and out at all. Now we can part this guy off, remount it in a four jaw chuck so I can get it perfectly concentric and I can drill and tap for the 3 8 24 and uh, we can move on. By the way, just an interesting observation, let me pull wide here. Um, I switched from my last couple passes from this uh, diamond uh, shaped insert which it looks like it's chipped but that's actually just dust oil coming off my hands. Um, the finish was pretty terrible with this inside. I switched to an aluminum style uh, positive rake cutter and got a glass like finish inside. It's like it was ground. It's just wonderful. So anyways I'll show you when it's all done what it looks like but interesting observation. So I find that even when I'm not doing aluminum, switching to one of these positive rate cutters can really improve my finish a lot. Next up, we're going to park this guy off and uh, let's see how that goes. That's really well. I mentioned before that I'm in love with this 1144 stress proof. This stuff's amazing to work with. Compared to the hot rolled and cold rolled I normally get access to.
So hopefully you can see the finish in there. That's the finish with the positive rate cutter. No sanding, no grinding. That's pretty amazing. It is an incredibly tight finish. So next, we're gonna get the four jaw chuck mounted. We're gonna pop this guy in, face it off, drill and tap for a 3 8 24. Then it's over the mill for two set screws and we'll be done. So I was getting ready to put this guy in the four jaw chuck face it, drill and tap the other side, and I thought, hey, you know, I'll just give it another shot and test this guy. Uh, when I tested it, it was two tenths over and I could just get these in. Now it's cooled off, and it wasn't too hot to touch before, but it doesn't fit at all. <laughs> so I'm going to have to re-bore it out uh, a few more tenths, maybe even a thousandth, just to get it to uh, fit snugly again. I think that's pretty amazing. Just that little temperature distance, maybe third difference, maybe 30 degrees. Uh, Fahrenheit. So we got this guy in the four jaw chuck, protected with some pieces of brass, and have it indicated in. I don't have that on zero, but it's uh, pretty much off by a tenth or two. Taking ten thousandths off. Very nice finish. Next up, I'm going to mark the face of this so I can chamfer it so these two parts meet kind of nicely. Not exactly, but close. Next, just chamfering up to the blue line. Very nice. So next up, we're just going to put four flats on this guy. Among other things, that'll let us untighten this off the 3 8 uh, 24 threads of the MT4 shank. Um, it'll also give us flats for the set screws. So first we're going to put the flats, then we'll put the set screws. Next up, we're going to drill and tap for 3 8 24 set screws that will press against the welding flats to hold this in place. Um, there will be two 90 degrees apart and uh, that will complete the project. So here's the final assembly with the two uh, set screws for the welding shank. And I screwed up on one side. Uh, the part had slipped off of the parallels and I didn't notice when I tightened it. Uh, I had a little shim in it and it lifted up and uh, that was a nice little screw up, won't kill me. The flats, besides giving a spot for the set screws to sit in, also uh, make it easy to put a crescent wrench around this guy to remove it off here if it gets tight. So first we pop this guy on here and I could crank that down. Then we pop the, uh, the annular cutter in, which is a very tight fit incidentally. It's uh, about uh, seven tenths of a thousandth oversized uh, the hole, which is pretty darn good. And uh, there you go. I've got an annular cutter holder 
for my tailstock of my lathe. And uh, the beauty is I can remove this guy because of the flats, and I can make other adapters that'll fit on here, and I'm good to go. These adapters are fairly inexpensive on eBay. So I hope you found this interesting, hope you found it useful, and hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.